findings and above all thanks to the solutions that uh, he is designing together with his partners. Um, uh, our PCs and as well as our smartphones will be able to um, dramatically reduce the uh, latencies in the communications with our with next door to our, uh, our providers. And uh, likely uh, this solution uh, in a near future may reduce latency uh, all over the internet uh, worldwide. This man is David Tart. Once things hit the internet, 
Um, they get to um, go back to light speed and do really good stuff. But we've proven that our bottlenecks have been occurring at the head end, whoops, and at the, well, uh, and at the home gateways, to where we are preserving packets for longer than we ever thought was even possible. The vast majority of our protocols for the internet were designed with roughly a two-second time off, time out, because at the time that seemed very reasonable. That's the distance between here and the moon and, and then some. And at that point, they'll do all kinds of interesting algorithms for repeating their packets, like its exponential backoff, etc. So they start sending more packets, assuming that the previous packet was lost. In the case of TCP, its default round trip timeout defaults to about half a second. What's happening here by buffering up and keeping all these packets for so long is that all these other protocols running on top of the underlying stack in this case are now sending more packets, which are now being delayed for increasing amounts of time. That is buffer bloat. So, however, the worst offender in this particular case is TCPIP. And what TCPIP does is it tries really hard to find the amount of bandwidth available on the link. And it does that by continuously probing if it can get just a little bit more, just a little bit more, just a little bit more. And most TCPs depend on a packet being lost in order to provide a back signal to the sending process to say, hey, slow down a little bit. Now this varies in terms of its RTT, around trip time, as to the quality of the signal the longer your RTT is, the longer it takes for that signal to get back to TCP, means that oops, what happens is it will ramp up, it will find the available bandwidth, it will drop a packet, it will then cut its overall transmission rate in half, and repeat the process over and over again so it can use all the bandwidth available on the link. If you introduce an RTT, measured as 30 times the distance from here to the moon, this sawtooth gets a little out of control. So, if you see here, this is a nice small one, this is relative to buffering, but it also is real relative to the amount of physical distance between you and someone else, the actual amount of delay 